tonight, several breaking headlines as we come on the air. A federal magistrate judge unsealing the search warrant for former President Trump's home at Mar-a-Lago. What they allegedly found. The warrant revealing Trump is under investigation for potential violations of the Espionage Act and possible obstruction of justice. The property receipt showing what federal agents took from Mar-a-Lago, including 11 sets of classified information, some marked top secret. One set of documents referred to as top secret sensitive information, meaning only a select few are allowed access in secure locations. So what does this all mean now and where does this go from here? Jonathan Carl and Dan Abrams standing by. Also tonight, author Salman Rushdie attacked on stage in Western New York, a man stabbing him repeatedly before being tackled by police. Rushdie, the target of death threats for decades, then airlifted to the hospital. News coming in on his condition tonight and what played out in front of those in horror in the audience. Also breaking at this hour, a major victory for President Biden just moments ago. House Democrats tonight passing the $740 billion bill the biggest investment in fighting climate in U.S. history, lowering health care and prescription drug costs, taxing corporations, and lowering the deficit. Mary Bruce, live at the White House. Late word coming in tonight on that deadly movie set shooting involving actor Alec Baldwin, the new FBI report out tonight, and what it reveals about the gun Alec Baldwin was holding. News tonight on the man who showed up at that FBI office in Cincinnati with an AR-15-style weapon in body armor, the chase, and now we learn what he had posted and that authorities believe he was in Washington, D.C. on January 6th. In New York City tonight, the new health warning traces of polio now found in New York City wastewater, raising concerns about the contagious disease spreading among the unvaccinated. Tonight, actress Anne Heche's family says she is brain dead on life support and what they're now saying. The frightening moment for tourists as a plane makes a landing too close for comfort and two brothers and their sister on the baseball field. And what came next? Definitely the play of the week. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us as we near the end of another week together. And we begin tonight with the breaking news. Tonight, a federal magistrate judge has now unsealed the search warrant used in the FBI raid of President Trump's home at Mar-a-Lago. The warrant revealing the former president is under investigation for potential violations of the Espionage Act and possible obstruction of justice charges. We learn that among other things taken from the home, 11 sets of classified documents, some at the highest levels of classification, meaning only a few people should ever have access to them and in very secure locations. Tonight here, we have learned much more about what federal agents were looking for when they raided the property on Monday. The Justice Department and FBI believe Donald Trump was keeping classified documents with national security implications at his home. And today, the Washington Post reporting some of those classified documents related to nuclear weapons. The property receipt released with the warrant, a list of what was taken on that list, those 11 sets of classified information, the executive grant of clemency to Roger Stone, a handwritten note, information about the president of France, binders of photos, 27 boxes in all. Just 24 hours ago, Attorney General Merrick Garland, under intense scrutiny, coming before the cameras, strongly indicating that they had tried other routes to retrieve these documents before executing the search warrant. Of course, we know there was a subpoena in the spring. And we now know investigators found documents classified all the way to top secret. Again, only a few would ever get access to them in those secure locations. Our chief Washington correspondent, Jonathan Carl, leading us off. Tonight, an eye-opening window into why the FBI took the extraordinary step